to the July meeting of the Planning Commission. If you'd take a minute, please, and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation from uh, Mr. Dale Tyler. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're just thankful for such a wonderful place you've given us to live in this, this city of Springdale. We're just thankful for all the workers and all the staff and, and for this commission. We ask that you please guide this commission to make the best decisions possible for Springdale. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dale. Before we get started uh, tonight, there are a few items off the agenda that have been have been tabled. Uh, C2310 um, has been canceled. Um, 2311 has been tabled. And one last item, uh, B2380, has been tabled as well, and we'll take those up at a later date. Um, so uh, right now, I guess we do the roll call. Howard Austin. Here. Ray Cardiel. Here. Mark Cloud. Gary Compton. Here. Brent Couch, Here. Chris Hussain, Here. Shannon Mueller, Peyton Parker, Here. Dale Tyler. Here. Thank you. If there are no changes, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes from our June meeting. So moved. Thanks, Chris. Any comments on that? All in favor of the motion is being approved? Thank you. It passes unanimously, 7-0. We had some tabled items uh, from an earlier from earlier meetings. Um, the first one is 2332 uh, Brentwood Village um, on Dodd Tyson Parkway, east of Hilton Road, and that's presented tonight by D.R. Horton. All right, we may. We have somebody who's going to represent this. I'm not sure. We may need to, is that her? Can you hit the microphone, please? There you go. <laughs> um, hello, my name is Ashley Williams. I'm actually the engineer with Strand um, here tonight to answer any questions and hopefully get this item approved. Do you have someone here from DR Horton and do we have authorization for this? For her to represent it? We did fill out the authorization and the person from DR Horton is on their way. I think there's a little bit of a line at the security, but they should be up here any second. Okay. Because I don't think you're you're are you authorized to represent? We we did fill out the authorization for my for myself as well. Okay. But um Debbie's looking just a second. We just gotta make sure we get the right person who's yes, ma'am is making the presentation. Okay, there's the the Horton people. Come on in. Who's going to stand up at the table and, and answer questions when I ask questions? I'm I'm happy to answer okay. any questions, and depending okay. on what the question is, it might be a you know okay. Dr. Horton or it might be myself. Okay. Uh, they are submitting a revision to Brentwood Village that was approved previously, and tonight we're going to go over those revisions. Um, right now, they are uh, proposing four phases to the project. Um, the, the development document is a little bit unclear, saying the initial construction is anticipated to include phase one only, but may include a combination of phase one and, and, more of, and one or more of the additional phases. How much of phase one is already completed? It's, under, it's, it's all it's under, under construction, construction currently. Okay. You actually don't have anyone living in any of those, but it is under construction, correct? Right. That is correct. Okay, and you said one or more additional phases. Uh, can you give us some idea of, of, of what that's going to be? Um, or do you know yet? I mean, we're definitely anticipating moving forward with phase two next. 
I think the question more so is, you know, will phase two and phase three be concurrent or will they follow one after the other? And part of that's gonna depend, like how quickly they go together will be just how quickly they sell. Okay. You do say on page nine of the development plan that construction of all four phases of the subdivision is anticipated to be completed within 78 months of PUD approval with phase one being constructed first. Based on demand, additional phases can be structured, constructed concurrently with phase one. So that's still good? Yes, ma'am. Correct. Okay. So we have 78 months from today's approval is what you're asking for. Correct. Okay. Okay. And you just need to make sure that we had that cleared up. If you don't mind, change the item number four on the development plan to have the same language in it that you have on page nine in that third paragraph. Okay. Uh, the major change in this PUD development is there will be no duplexes in this complex at all, correct? Yes, ma'am. That is correct. There'll be single family homes and townhomes is all that's going to be developed. Uh, the single family uh, lots will be 367. Uh, the typical lot size will be 47 by 130 deep and 60 by 130. Uh, then there will be 96 town townhouse lots. Now, the term townhouse lots is a little bit confusing in that you show phase three is all one lot, but what you anticipate is, is doing those as condominiums, and I talked to you all about that today. Can you address that just for a minute? Yeah, I can address that. Okay. I, this is, I'm Brian can, Doyle with DR Horton. Okay. Um, the townhomes are going to be divided up so that we can sell them individually. So they aren't really lots, but they're they're separated legally so that we could convey a okay. a sold lot. Are they separated a sold as a as a horizontal property regime? So you're actually buying the inside of that, or are you buying land that goes with it? Because that's what's got to be cleared up in this before we can move this forward. The the land would be common land. They okay. they are only buying the townhome. Okay. Are they buying the outside of the townhome or only the inside? They are buying the outside as okay. well. It's a sh still a shared expense because they're shared use. Okay. Then we have got to clean up the document so it says that. And in this townhome section on item number one under development strategy, that needs to be reflected in this part of the development plan that brings up that whole thing about the condominium and how you intend to develop it because that's not clear in your development plan. It's only in the covenants. Okay. okay? Yes, we'll, we'll clean okay. that up. And then uh, I noticed also in here in your covenants, you indicate that you will allow home occupations in the single family dwellings. How is that going to, if that's the case, then you need to add as a use unit, a use unit number, a, whatever number is a home occupation. 29. 28 or 29. Okay. And how, will those become a conditional use that comes back to the planning commission to approve those home, those home offices, or is it going to be handled through the POA and how will they get business license? Because if we're going to set it up as a conditional use, then this use unit needs to say that. Otherwise, if you don't allow that to happen, there's no conditional use for that to happen in the structure itself. And the city's regulations for home office regulates it to di 10 different items. Are those the ones you're going to allow to go in? That's what we're going to uh, change that to, to cover the 10 okay. items we talked okay. about. Okay, so that use unit needs to be added to this number two, and it needs to be set up as a conditional use which means if somebody wants to have a home office in any of those structures, single family homes or townhomes, and they have to come back to the planning commission and get a conditional use in this PUD, just like anybody else would, correct? That's the way we prefer it. We don't okay. want to okay. monitor that. Okay. Then that needs to be changed in this document too. All of these changes will have, if it, this is approved, will have to be done before it goes to council on the 25th. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So now we have 367 single family lots, 94, townhouse buildings, 463 units, which is 4.34 units per acre. It was previously 4.6, so we're seeing a reduce in the density. The green space has been increased from 16.2% uh, to 21.3% or 22.7 acres. And we talked about there is no typical lot size for the townhomes because it is one lot and you would be owning the individual townhome itself. That needs to be cleared up in that area as well. And any place that's referred to in here, that needs to be cleared up. Yes, ma'am. 
uh, you indicate, and, and some of this is not different. I just want to make sure everybody understands uh, the setbacks that you that were established in the original uh, put have not changed. Correct. Those are those are still the same. Single family lots will have twenty five foot fronts, five sides, and twenty rears, with uh, corner lots having fifteen on the side. Townhomes will have twenty five front, five. Uh, five foot in any other in instances and 15 foot on corner lots. They're all accessed from the rear. Or do you still have some that aren't? On the townhomes? Uh huh. No, we we definitely don't have, or we have some that are not accessed from the rear. Okay, you need to make sure that's clear in here too okay. as well. And you are looking at two different street sizes or just one? The townhomes have a different street size. Okay. It, this shows that the right of way would be 46 foot of right of way, and that's so somebody can. That's parking along the street, correct? Correct. Okay. And you don't allow parking on the street in any of the single family lots. What street section are you using in that? Which section? There's some on the southern side um, adjacent to the easement. Yeah, so in phase two on the southern side, you'll see some that we are proposing some street parking okay. um, adjacent to like that common area and open space. Okay. Your development plan indicates there are two different right away sizes in that area because it doesn't say that now. Okay. Okay, understood. Okay. Um, and you have plans and elevations. Can we flip on over to that so everybody can kind of see what the buildings are going to look like? We had them before, didn't we? Oh, they're in the packet. They may not be on the screen. Okay. You guys have seen them. I don't think they're much different than what we saw before. Are you using the same look that we had before? Okay. Um, the amenities haven't changed. We have the same amenity package that we had before. Okay. Um, and in the covenants itself, there's, I, I must say, you have a pretty good set of covenants. It just needs a little bit of tweaking to make sure that everybody understands you don't make changes to the PUD itself unless the city approves it. And you have, that's why this condominium unit has to be cleared up before we get to council because that's part of the, of the declaration of covenants, but it also has to be in the development plan. And under your restrictions, you say that uh, property can be added or withdrawn. Those, that cannot be done unless the city council approves that. Okay, okay. so you need to, to that has to go back through a PUD amendment process to either add land to it or take land away from it. Okay, so that is on page six of the covenants that need to be fixed. Um, and then once we deal with all this supplemental information for the uh, condominiums will be fine. Uh, you're changing this whole area about the businesses that are allowed as home offices and they need to be called home offices as a use unit, as we described. Um, you have some information in here in your covenant about, about conceptual plans for the common areas. Is this different than what is proposed on the on the plan itself? The, the common area plan? Uh -huh. it, it shouldn't be any different. It, it might be less than what we're going to but it's no more you can't do less you got to do what's on the plan so that I, that's what is a little bit concerning about conceptual plans are you anticipating that those conceptual plans will be sit, submitted to the city to see that they are in conformance with the adopted PUD yes. if you put that in there then we got it. it's fine but you can't just have changes out there on your own to happen because this is a PUD understood okay um uh, Minimum uh, square footage is still 1,300 square feet for all of the single family, and is that townhomes as well? Yes. Okay. And all of them will be at least 25% masonry, with masonry to include brick, stone, cultural stone, integral color stucco, and concrete siding. Nothing will have a, a roof pitch other than a 6 to 12. None of that has changed. Um, you do explain what can be household pets. I think that's pretty much in keeping with the, the city's ordinance. The rubbish and debris, you need to make a comment in your covenants about the, the 
all residents have to be part of the city's solid waste management plan? And how do you anticipate doing the townhomes? Will each, each townhome have a set of carts or will you be doing dumpster locations for all of them? No, uh, our preference would be that each townhome has its own set of carts. Um, we, they each have garages and function like okay. an individual home and operate more like a duplex, which is still you know closer to a traditional okay. single family home. But if the city has a preference, we'd be happy to hear now that. No, that's fine. You just have to elect what you're gonna do and make sure the covenants and the development plan say the same thing. Um, this uh, covenant allows the board to have the right, but not the duty to designate portions of lots for maintenance by the association at the lot owner's expense. I'm assuming that's the, the condominium stuff. You're not gonna do it on single family homes, are you? On uh, overseeing their maintenance? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we will as far as uh, mowing and fence maintenance, sure. We will. Okay, this needs to be cleared up as to what areas of the plan you're talking about. Um, antennas, you took care of those. Locations of permitted antennas. Uh, signage has to be in conformance with the city's sign ordinance or this stipulates above that. You would be responsible for that. Does set the size of a temporary for sale sign and how long it can be on and what size it can be. Um, you limit the size of the storage buildings to 100 square feet, which is less than what the city will allow. That's fine, as long as it needs to be in your development plan, too, when it's in your covenants. It's got to be in both places. And this, I'm telling you these things that are not in both places. And it can't have any taller than eight feet, and it has to be constructed with applicable building setbacks. You need to make sure that's in your development plan as well. Okay? Mobile homes and trailers. You do have a section on basketball goals, permanent and portable. Uh, please make a note about that in the development plan because it's easier to find that way than it is in the covenants itself, okay? Um, garages can't be used for anything other than parking, same as we talked about before. Uh, playscapes and sport coats courts are permissible at the discretion of the ACC, are those on individual lots or is that a amenity? Uh, individual lots. Okay. And you have decorations and lightings, how long all that can go on. Uh, you can't put exterior window units, uh, air conditioning units in, specify what the window treatments need to look like. Um, and you're indicating rentals have to be for at least 12 months, so there's no Airbnbs of any kind in this. And it would be very helpful if you would make that very clear that it's 12 months only. I don't know how we're going to, that's something you're going to police as, as far as through the POA, I would assume. Uh, fences and sidewalks, there's no changes in that, what we have. Um, drainage, I think we took care of. Do you allow swimming pools on individual lots? Because those lots are pretty small. How are you going to get a swim? If they can get one on there, we'll approve the pool. Okay. That, that's going to be tight. <laughs> okay. That's all I can say. It's going to be tight. Uh, parking, we address those there. You're going to make that mandatory membership into the, the POA. And when does the PO, POA get turned over? I'm assuming the, the Air Horton will main control, maintain control of it to a certain point. Yes. Did it tell me in here where that was? Because I didn't. Uh, I didn't pick I did it up. I did not see language about. I mean, typically we try to keep them until we're totally built out. Okay, totally Unless built out, or yeah, totally built out. Okay, just make sure that that's in here. I didn't find it, but I went through it kind of hurry again this morning, and I, I didn't find it anywhere in any of that. Uh, this says the association uh, covenants of common areas. The association may acquire, hold, and dispose of any tangible and intangible personal property and real property, the the common areas have to be maintained by the POA. Okay. Yes. And I'm not sure that's what this says, but it has to be that way. Or you have to come back to the Planning Commission and the City Council to get that changed. 
Okay, so you need to check the language on that one. Um, assessments, everything like that seems to be the same. I'm assuming that the assessments will change a little bit for the maintenance fund for the townhomes. Yes, ma'am. And that needs to be addressed in here. It's not in there now. Okay, and, and the general statement about it needs to be uh, in the plan itself. The Architectural Review Committee. The Architectural Review Committee will have to sign off on anything before the city will allow it to be to get a permit for it. That's the way you have it set up, right? Yes. Okay. I'm assuming that was the case. Uh, there is a thing in here about variances from compliance with provisions of the design gu guidelines. Once this is approved, there is no variances. So you need to take that whole variance section out. If you want to amend the design standards, you can, but there are no variances once this thing is, a is approved. So that needs to come out. Um, and I think that's it. So that's a pretty quick rendition, but other than that, everything else is the same what we talked about with the previous one. And I can go into any more details if somebody needs to, something in particular they want to ask about. Thanks, Patsy. Are there any uh, questions or comments from anybody in the audience? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, if you could go to the microphone, please. Can you, can you go to the microphone, please? Thank you. There was an empty spot in the lot there. You, uh, D.R. Horton just bought one of the parcels in there. Just bought, bought one of the parcels in there. I was wondering if they're going to, if this is only revision one of this and um, whether or not we're going to see, you know, if they buy, there's only two other family parcels in there. All right. If they bought one, they're definitely sniffing around for the other two. Well, I just, I, I just said, if they add property to it or take property away, they have to come back and have it amended. What we're talking about is what the original boundary was now. We're not changing any of the boundaries. If they want to add those properties to this P this PUD sometime in the future, they'll be coming back for a simpler revision just to add that property to it. Okay, and okay. I noticed that um, phase two is going to be on build on the lower part now. Is that correct? Okay, and um, the only point of egress for this whole thing is going to be Hilton Avenue. They are... They are working on getting Hilton Avenue built. They understand that before they can get any final uh, approvals to file the lots, it has to be completed. And I think they've already submitted their construction plans to engineering. I think we're, are we, I don't know if we're ready to go to construction, but that process is moving better than it was before, and they understand that the road has to be built. Okay, and you understand, too, that there's a 217 master plan. There's a road right beneath this. Mm -hmm. And that's already on there. They are dedicating the right of way of that all the way across. But are they and, building it? And they're not. They're not being asked to build it. It is included in the upcoming bond program as a project to build that across through there. So the plan of traffic then is to send everything up to Don Tyson. Okay. The plan of in the new bond program, the street being built east to west is part of that bond program. Oh, it I is. I can't tell you that it's going to be the first project that's being done or the last, but it is included in that bond program. Because we all know it needs to be done. I've got some maps there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I live right next door to this like four houses away. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Butterfly Avenue. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, they pull plants. Then the first day of that traffic in our area. Find it. It's plan number two. That's the name. All right. There's no bond issue. Got a bond issue for it. All right. That'll take three years. Is that correct? And that's for shovel ready project. We're only going to start building shovel right? Well, and you got to do all the studies and all that. Can't go to the road. You only need a section to the road, though. You know, just save on the maintenance fund. Sir, I can tell you that I think the mayor and the council understands the importance of this getting built so that people do not use Butterfly Avenue to go across. It is on the bond program. They are in the process of getting it, hiring an engineer to design it. It is moving forward. I mean, we've got most of the right-of-way. We don't have a lot of right-of-way to acquire because it's being donated with this project. I think I think I can tell you with, with all confidence. Is the mayor here? 
you want to address this? It's, it's on the list that we presented yeah. to council. Okay. Yeah. It would have, yeah. That's fine. It's on the list that was presented to council. The council blessed that. They didn't, there were no formal approvals for them to make. They'll approve each project as it comes forward. But, uh, but we're, we're planning on doing this project as one of the uh, road projects out of this bond issue. So you're, you're right, the, the money has to be uh, 80, 80 or 85% uh, spent uh, within three years of the sale of the bonds, which the sale of the bonds was just a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, and so we've got a lot of work to do. So they're gonna be building this in four phases? That correct? Correct. Yes. yes. Okay, and you figure out a phase per year? Okay. Well, I, we, we're not gonna get into that kind of detail here tonight. Understanding that we all know there is a traffic situation and we will work through that. They'll have other access points. We've opened up some other areas that connect Hilton over to other streets besides Butterfly Avenue. Sir, I can tell you we're doing our best where, to get where? this thing I mean, forward. Yeah, I'd like to know about that because all, they, this is the only east-west route. You know, if people are headed, you know, Don Tyson is a nice highway, all right? I use it if I go to the airport or if I go up to um, Bentonville. But as far as going south to Fayetteville or even Little Rock, our street is the only access east to west. And I'm really concerned that, you know, there's gonna be a amount of traffic. You know this area, this is a sleeper village, sleeper town for um, Fayetteville. You know, right now on indeed.com, there's probably 60% more jobs listed in Fayetteville, all right? We don't even speak the same language as you. We don't, um, we don't call it Thompson Street, it's college, you know? Um, well, that's your first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. It's, it's Thompson. I, I live here. Look, I, I it's 90% uh, of my years. Where I think Patsy's giving you the best answer we can give you. The council has been very open and upfront that this that we're going to have to build another street through there, another connection, east-west connection. Yep. We just can't give you the exact timing on it. But neither they can't give you the exact timing on when you're going to when all these people are going to move in either. We're just going to work forward as fast as we can, and we we hope we can get that get that done in time where uh, where the traffic doesn't get worse before it gets better. Okay, but, but what happens if it does get worse first? It, then it gets worse, and we we we're we're doing the best we can. Yeah. I, I don't have a better answer for you than that. I don't know. You and know. there's a lot of there's a lot of things you know that this all this all came up because of the development out there, but you can't you can't build this stuff before it's developed. You have to build it when the need is there. Well, and we're going to when we're doing our best to address that. Okay, four years. They're going to probably going to start building next year over there. They're finishing up the roads and stuff like that. So that's a year of development. This is about oh, I don't know, 450 homes, I believe, something like that. The average family has 2.5 cars. I think the majority of the traffic is going to be headed over to Fayetteville because that's the that's the only route out of there. You know, you can't go up to Don Tyson. All right, from the bottom of this development, it's three quarters of a mile up to Don Tyson. From the end of our street, it's a five minute drive. It's only two miles and you could be in Fayetteville. So the, the you know that, what I get, what I'm get flustered about is all that traffic we're gonna have to deal with. And I know you don't have a real plan for this street yet. You know, I think it's a little bit premature to build phase two. We could live with this for a while if they would build phase three next. All right, because one one of their two points of egress, go both of them go over to Hilton. All right. If you put all that traffic down there in phase two and all those homes, that's gonna be all that extra traffic that goes up there. You know, and their only way out is down our street. You know, we're a residential street. We're gonna, you know, by the time this ends up. We're going to have, you know, thousands of cars here, you know, 400 homes. Two, two Sir, cars. I don't know how you can assume everybody's going to go to Fayetteville. I don't know that anybody can tell you that, but well, I can tell you I this project 70%. has already been approved. They have taken the duplexes out that many people in that neighborhood were concerned about to start with. Yes. They've reduced the density. They are moving forward with it. They're building the road on Hilton. I think they've done everything that they 
that we've asked them to. We could go back to the old plan and leave the duplexes in there, but I think we have a much better situation, and the city's working very hard to address this issue. We know what it is. Okay. I mean, but, you're, you're you know, getting I, in I, an area where I think we've put a lot of emphasis in to get something taken care of. Yeah, I mean, this is a large area. This is about as almost right? 20 acres less than Disneyland in Paris. You know, that's a lot of people. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't have never made that connection, but okay, whatever. You don't it's know not Disneyland down there. I can tell you, I've been, I've been acres to be able it's to say that. Yeah. Okay, so your 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 concerns are well noted. Okay. Okay. Sir, did I I didn't get your name and address, I know, please? I'm sorry. My name is Roger Preby. I live at three nine seven two Butterfly. I love it here. I've lived here five years, and I love the diverse community, to be very honest. But my heart lies in Fayetteville, my family, everything. <laughs> well, I you know I live here. I, I pay taxes here. Ninety percent of the money I spend is in the city. You know. Yeah. Thank you. Another, I think Thank we had you. another gentleman who want to make a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Is it okay if I live on Butterfly, Stephen Fedorico, 4048 Butterfly? Is it okay if I put a gate up there on Butterfly and charge a buck a car to get through there? No? <laughs> I'm kidding. I have one question, though. On the original plan on phase three up at the north end, um, there it indicated a, a bridge or a walkway over to George Park. I'm not seeing that now. Is that still part of the plan? I think that was on the original concepts. I don't think that came through with the last uh, proposal. Yeah, sure. Um, we actually recommended they remove it um, because it crosses the floodplain and Clear Creek, and we did not think that that was a good idea. So what we've asked them to do is make the connection to Hilton Road, and then we'll have sidewalk along Hilton Road. So, yeah, we asked them to remove it. I just, yeah. mm -hmm. I just simply saw that it was missing. So um, I think you've addressed... All of the issues that we had concerns with on the in Butterfly, uh, traffic notwithstanding, we know it's going to increase a little bit, but I'm totally in favor of this revision. This is a positive move on the DR Horton's part and the planning council to uh, make only single family dwellings, which is what we proposed to begin with a couple of years ago. So finally, <laughs> it's good. I'm all in favor of it. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm William Atkins. I'm at 4460 Stonehenge. I'm in the cul-de-sac. I'm seeing all of this construction, okay? I'm in favor of this change, okay? But somebody needs to come address some stop sign issues, okay? There, there's a few stop signs in some of the older developments that have not been taken care of, uh, especially on Stonehenge with all the new development just to the south of us, okay? And it, as soon as they can, put stop signs up because there's a lot of racers over there in that area. We have just addressed with Public Works the need to get the street name signs and the stop signs up as soon as the final plats are approved. Yeah. And I think those areas just got approved, so those should be okay. put up fairly soon. And another thing is the Butterfield coach. I don't know if they plan to take care of that, but all the way up to Fayetteville area on Butterfield Coach, they replaced all of, it, all of it on Joyce. They need to come this way and go all the way to Don Tyson because all of that right there is all tore up. They've gone in there and tried to patch it, but and they need to widen that little narrow bridge there just south of, uh, of Butterfly or north of Butterfly. So some of the streets over there need to be maintained I, unless you're waiting until all the construction gets through. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? To the commission, any questions or comments? If not, this would be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. From Dale Tyler. Austin. Cardiel? Yes. Compton? Yes. Couch? Yes. Hussein? Yes. Parker? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Call for the vote passes 7-0. Staff will prepare the ordinance that goes to council on July the 25th, assuming we have all of the amendments to the documents presented. I need them by next Wednesday in my office in order to get on the council agenda, or we'll put it off until the next council meeting in August. 
Okay. Everybody got that? Yes, ma'am. Understood. Thank you all okay. for your time. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is 2309 and the variance request uh, 2369. This is Island Barbecue on North Thompson, presented by Bellamon Tarbwillen. Yes, my name is uh, Bellyman Tarpo. Um, we're going to put a Highland barbecue on the lot. Okay. Uh, is the property owner here too? Yeah, the, the winner is here. Okay. Okay, I understand that. I'm sorry. You know what? That comment. Well, I just walked into the middle no, of it. No, no, he's, I think he's done presenting. He just said he wants to put a food truck, truck on, here, on it. Huh? Yes. Okay. Now, do you currently only have a nail salon at this location and an event center? That's the only two things that are on that at that location, correct? We are still working on the event center, but okay. um, the nail salon, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Okay, and it's there will be no auto sales on this lot? No, not okay. anymore. There's not one car right there right now. Okay, okay. I want to make sure we, we all know that and it's in the record. Uh, the ingress and egress is acceptable. The off-street parking and loading is acceptable. You provided a parking plan that shows us where you can meet those parking requirements with three spaces being uh, reserved for this parking, and you're putting picnic tables in three other spaces to the south of the, the food truck. Um, you indicated that you have, a st or you have a statement from the pastor at King's Chapel that this is where you're going to take your uh, gray water. Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We need to submit that to Springdale Water because I don't know that they will accept that. Are you getting the fresh water from them as well? Or where will you get your fresh water? Um, uh, we have a container. Okay, but you got to fill it up from somewhere. Where are you filling it up at? Um, we can fill it up from uh, the building. We, we connect the hose and fill it up. From the, from the event center or the salon that's there is what you intend to do? You're going to get it from another link there? Yeah, it's going to be from the 920 from the building where the event center is at. Okay, because your your document says that you will get have a 25-gallon intake water tank for fresh water and a 30-gallon discharge, and the gray water will go to King's Chapel Kitchen. But it, it doesn't say, and it's that's the only signature on here, and I'm assuming that's where you get the water as well. So that will need to be revised so we know where the water is coming from. And then we have to get with Springdale Water to see if that's acceptable for the disposal of that. Are you? Do they have a, an access outside for you to, to drain your tank, or how do you intend to do that? Uh, there's like a drain on the south side where kind of where it says garbage. A drain on the outside, does it go to the wastewater system or does it go into the stormwater? It's going to go into the stormwater. No, it's not going to go into the stormwater. No, oh, that's not acceptable. That's why we have to know how this is going to work. It has to go into some place where it can go into the sanitary sewer system. Okay, you can't yeah. dump it into a, a storm sewer. Okay, so you're going to have to go back and, and get that taken care of before we can move this forward. We have to know where you're getting the fresh water and how you're disposing of the gray water into a sanitary sewer system, not into the storm sewer. Okay? Um, there's a kitchen at the King Chapel. I don't know that you can carry it inside the kitchen and dump it into their sink or something like that because that would violate probably their health department um, permit for doing that. There has to be a method for this. So you really got to work on that before we can, before we can let you get started, okay? Or you have to t drive the truck off and go to the wastewater treatment plant and play to have pay to have it dumped there. You got to come up with some solution so we know exactly 
where the gray water is going to go. Okay? Okay. Uh, now, you want to uh, attach it to power, and there is a power pole at the rear that you're going to put it in. You're setting another pole. You're setting another service. You say there's a utility box. What utility box is that? Okay, you need to get with the building inspector and figure out how to hook it up to power if you are granted that variance. Do you have any signage that you're putting on the on the truck itself? Yeah, we're just gonna put it on the truck. Uh, we're just gonna put a sticker on the truck. Okay, nothing, no signs on the property anywhere else, just on the truck itself. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, the yard requirements are okay. The size and shape is acceptable. Uh, these are the other following conditions for mobile vending. Parking and loading areas are identified, and they have to be identified on the site. May not operate between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. No obstruction of parking spaces required for operation of any other uses on the site. Maintain on the site a minimum of three parking spaces designated for their use. If a health certificate is required, which it is, display the health certificate in a manner visible to customers. No obstruction of pedestrian or motor vehicle traffic flow. No obstruction of traffic signals or regulatory signs. No vending upon a public way. No sound devices that produces a loud and raucous noise in violation of city ordinance or violate any other city ordinances in connection with the vending operation. Keep the vending site clean and free of paper or refuge of any kind generated from the operation of their business. All trash or debris accumulating within 20 feet of any vending stand collect and deposit into a trash container, submission of an approved gray water disposal by Springdale Water, and submission of a, an approved grease disposal method approved by Arkansas Department of Health, and any electric service must be underground permanent service. You can't run an extension cord to get to it. Okay? You yes, understand all those? Yes. Okay. Those are all the conditions. Are there any comments from uh, members of the audience? Hearing none, this would come to the commission. Any questions or comments? And if there are none, this is a call for the vote. Let's do the variance request first for the utility hookup. And the variance is for the power to be connected. It has to be permanent. It has to be in the ground. Yes. Okay. We, we've talked about it several times, and that's why I'm asking again, when you say you're taking it to the church, that's not necessarily an acceptable method. Now, if you want us to go back and work with them some more, we can, or you can approve this subject to us getting, because they're not going to open until we get all this stuff done. It's your, it's your choice whether you want to give us which direction you want to go with it. But those, the water and the, and the gray water are very important that we get that taken care of and we know how the power is going to go to that truck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to put him on the spot, but Bellamont, the guy right there behind you in that orange shirt sitting down with the glasses on, he know, he could probably help you out with uh, how to dispose of your wastewater yeah. on that food truck. He knows quite a bit there. about Pyro. Oh, okay. <laughs> he, he, he knows about, he knows about that stuff. You might ask yeah. him. Because he had to do it for the one he has in, yeah. 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 So my question is, do you want us to table this and you work all that out before we address it? Because these are very serious issues that have to be taken care of. Okay, uh, maybe uh, no, no vote. No vote, okay. All right, so C-2309 and the variance request are both tabled. Now, this has been tabled once already, which yeah. means you need to, you have to resubmit, okay? Because we tabled it last month, too, right? Somebody tell me? Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Next on the agenda, 2339, this is the Randall Wobey Flex Space. Uh, it's presented by Swope Engineering. Hi, Phil Swope, here to answer your questions, looking for your approval. Okay, this property is zoned I-1, but 
but you're doing a commercial use in an I-1 zone, correct? That's correct. Okay. So commercial design standards well, do I apply because it is a commercial use in an I-1 zone. Understood. Yeah. Okay. It's flex space. There could be some commercial use, okay. some That's just industrial why I'm, use. I'm making sure everybody understands why we have a variance for commercial design standards, even though it's zoned industrial. Sure. We have other comments, too. In addition to standard comments, predominant exterior building materials shall not be smooth-faced concrete block, tilt-up concrete panels, or prefabricated steel panels, which a variance has been requested. All sides of a principal building that directly face an abutting public right-of-way shall feature at least one customer entrance, in which a variance has been requested. Um, and then I noted that the... Um, the outdoor storage trash collection and loading areas, the, the dumpster in particular, just needs a little additional landscaping, that the perimeter landscaping is um, not quite enough. That's all. Thanks. Engineering have comments? Engineering yeah. comments. Um, submit the revised drainage report, provide a detail for the trickle channel in the pond. For junction boxes underneath sidewalks, please provide a detail showing a notch at the top of the junction box for the sidewalk to sit on. And I think I have a detail if you need a copy of it. Um, and then please include a note stating if the lights are public or private lights and who will be responsible for installation, maintenance, and billing. And that would go for all the lights on the side. Thank you. Hi, Dave Burris, Burris Architecture, architecture record on this uh, project. I did want to thank you for pulling those up. I want to clarify uh, a couple of things. Uh, the, the term flex space is kind of uh, new and kind of growing. We've done more, quote unquote, flex spaces here within the past uh, three to four years. Uh, than we ever have. It's uh, it's an adaptation, if you will, to what was a warehouse. So people were taking warehouses and they were renting warehouse space anywhere between 1,500 to 3,000 square feet. The businesses that are renting some of those spaces were, uh, 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 it's a plumbing shop uh, and it's, it's literally a small office and it has an unconditioned warehouse space in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, obviously, a commercial use. Yes, this is intended to be uh, uh, leasing out to businesses, but its primary use is uh, is uh, a small office uh, with warehouse space. Uh, that being said, uh, the present uh, the uh, waiver uh, request. We are utilizing uh, a painted white brick and a metal panel. The metal panel I brought an example of. It's a 24 gauge architectural metal panel. Uh, it's smooth, uh, concealed fasteners. So when it all goes together, all we see is a, a nice little rim uh, here. They never offer the color that you've requested. They always just offer whatever standard color. So they, I got white here, but we are proposing a dark charcoal to contrast with the white brick with red and black trim accents. Just let me address that in, in Springdale's code of ordinances, trades and services are the kind of things that you are identifying small office, warehouse space, plumbers, those kind of things as trades and services as a commercial use. That's why you have to meet commercial design standards. That's okay? as we understood it. We didn't okay. want to limit our owner to be able to lease out to any business that might want to yep. come and lease out. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, you, you're you asking for a variance for only one principal access because the detention pond is between you and Lowell Road and you don't want to put a principal access on that side, correct? So we do have a, a, a storefront doors facing on both Lowell as well as uh, Randall okay. Wobie. Uh, to try to address the, the front door comment. Um, there is a detention pond in between us, but there is a sidewalk that uh, that accesses this. So okay. uh, we do we do have door, primary door entrances on all of street facing facades. Okay. And you have put additional landscaping in. Landscaping. Sharon, sure. do they have additional landscaping? What kind of so Okay. You gotta add landscaping around the yeah. dumpster, the rest of it. We got all the perimeter, all the foundation, everything else that we asked yeah. for. Yeah, and we have okay. no problems with the other planning comments or engineering. Those are all fine. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Kathy? Nope. Any comments from the audience on this project? If there are none, that would come to the commission. Uh, we have a variance request there, two of them, one for the materials presented in the colors and also the change on the entrance. Um, I'd entertain a motion that'd be subject to the staff comments as well on the variance. Can I can I interrupt just real quick? I'm yes. sorry. I don't think we're asking for the variance on the entrance. I think it's just on the color and material. We we do have primary entrances on both roads from okay. both buildings. Sorry. Okay. Well, where well, back up just a minute. Where's your entrance that goes to Randall Wobie? Uh, can you pull up the renderings, please? 
Yeah, there was confusion on that, but we sent in revised. There you go. You can see the north yes, elevation. Yes, north elevation on that building would be the. Okay. Yep. But you don't have a sidewalk that goes, that connects to, go back to the, where's your sidewalk that connects to Randall Lobby? I don't know that that's the latest one, but we're, we're happy to add that as a comment. Okay. Yep. So the entrance is going away because you're going to add the sidewalk to, Rand, to Randall Wilby. Correct. Okay. Got it. Yep. So it's just materials and colors. Yep. Okay. And something besides you get white, right? Not white. Okay, so it's a call for vote on call the for the vote on the uh, on the variance, variance request for materials and colors. Thank you, Ray Cardiel. Cardiel. Yes. Compton. Yes. Couch. Yes. Hussein. Yes. Parker. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Austin. Yes. That passes seven zero. Thanks. And now on the uh, space itself, this is a motion that would be uh, subject to our staff comments. Need a motion? Thanks, Chris Hussein. Thank you. Need a second on the motion? Second. Ray, thank you. Compton? Yes. Couch? Yes. Hussein? Yes. Parker? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Cardiel? Yes. Passes 7 0. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Next is B2363. This is uh, Mario Chavez, the artist barbershop. And it's presented by Mario Chavez. Hi, everybody. Uh, we own the ten. My name is Mario Chavez, and we own Ten Ten South Pleasant. Uh, we already have a barber shop in place. Uh, but we don't have an office uh, parking space. We only have three spaces on the front. So we're trying to build uh, more spaces on the back. Uh, I'm having a lot of problems with my neighbor because most of my customers going through his parking spaces. Uh, we share uh, the driveway with him, and I like to add 12 spaces on the back side of the business. Okay, you, you indicate you're willing to do a two-year bill of assurance. How, big, how much of the area are you going to... Paving the back. Uh, I, I wanted to do most of the space, like sixty by the hundred and forty. I want to put, I put I want to put asphalt on everything. Hmm. Why do you want to pave the entire site? Because uh, it'll be hard to maintain if we put grass in it, and well, people will be driving back and forth. If you look on the uh, south side of the building, uh, most of the people drive through there anyway. So might as well just put asphalt in case people drive around the building. And you've already gra graveled it, correct? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, Katie, do you have a stormwater comment since we're looking at paving the entire side? So you'll have to provide some kind of mitigation for the increase in runoff from this site. So um, we'll need an engineer to get us a study and probably lay out how you're going to do the parking lot. Um, I wouldn't recommend paving the entire site because um, where are you going to put your detention pond? You're going to probably have to have some kind of detention pond on the site. Okay. Um, that's that's what I would recommend is getting an engineer to lay this out for you. Well, you, you're going to have to detain on site somehow, and you need to do landscaping. You don't you didn't provide any landscaping if you're going to do that entire area in the back. Yeah, what the city requires as far as as the uh, grass and everything, how much I I have to have uh, for green areas on a building. Okay. So what we need to do is table this and you come back with a plan that says what you're going to do, but we need it within 60 days because you've already put the gravel down. All right. I will hire an uh, engineer and start working on, on that, and uh, we go from there. Good. Thank okay. you. Thanks. All right. Uh, that the barbershop uh, changes our table. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, rezoning, uh, we have R2334 Fisher Holdings on uh, 776 East Robinson. It's presented by Fisher Holdings. They want to change from a C2 to a C5. Hello. Hi. I'm Bob Fisher. Um, we've been a, we're 
uh, I've been a mechanical contractor. Started in 1990. Uh, we've been registered with the state of Arkansas and licensed in the state of Arkansas for six or seven years. And we currently rent a facility. And uh, then we bought the <coughs> approximately four point, a little less than 4.5 acres on the south end of the Springdale Airport. And uh, our intentions are to build a new office there and uh, increase uh, the number of people that work for us in Springdale. Okay, with the C2 zoning, you can go ahead and build an office in there without having to rezone the property. Uh, you, what are your other intentions on the property if you're rezoning it to a C5? Yeah, well, because um, the purpose of the building we don't do retail. We really don't do any retail business. All of ours is offsite. Um, so we need a place to stage our equipment, the air conditioning equipment, um, air handlers, um, plumbing fixtures, things like that. And they need to be kept uh, as well as the uh, trailers and things that we have to have to do our okay. business. And that, that that's my concern is the cost for having to concrete the whole back lot when we may have a trailer that will come in and out. Uh, I'm not okay. sure how many. Just rezoning it to C5 does not allow you to go ahead and do that without a large scale development plan that shows how you're going to put your office space on there, where you're going to store stuff outside, how you're going to screen it, what kind of material you're going to put on it. Just rezoning it to C5 doesn't, doesn't allow you to do that. So we can re go ahead and rezone it to C5, but you will have to come back with a large scale development plan that meets commercial design standards. And you can ask for whatever variances you want yeah. at the time you submit it, but. Right, I, and I think that was our intention. Okay, Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. just asking why you're going to C5 yeah. to make sure we understand yeah. the reason to go to C5. Because yeah. if I, it's just an office, you can do it with what you've got. Right, I just want to, if we could get it changed to C5, we certainly will. Okay, will. and you've already started putting, um, dumping material on that site? Fill material, yes. Okay, and, and have I, you, do you have a permit or have you met with with we have, engineering about? We have all the plans ready to submit to the state because I understand there has to be, um, what kind of plan is DNA? it? DNA. Is it the DNA? DNR. D the DNR. The state has to approve it also before we get our grading permit. Um, usually you. But I think the state also has to. Okay, so I'm, I'm saying we have to have both. <laughs> You're not going to get a grading permit from the state or anybody else until we get a large scale development plan approved. Okay? You started filling it without permission at this point. We're going to have to deal with that, and you're not going to get another permit until we get a large scale development plan approved for this site. Okay? okay. And it has commercial design standards. You need an architect as well. What kind of design? Okay? Probably. The rezoning request, the uh, C5 is in keep, the land use plan shows regional commercial zoning for this location. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan is recommended for approval. Prove the city's economic base and tax structure through the promotion of healthy, stable commercial concentrations, ensure adequate land allocation for commercial areas of sufficient size and improper locations. Anything more? And we're just talking about the rezoning. That's Correct. it. Correct. Right. Any comments at all from the audience? This would be a call for the vote um, to the commission. Couch? Yes. Hussein? Yes. Parker? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Cardiel? Yes. Compton? Yes. Motion passes. Call for the vote passes 7-0. The staff will prepare the ordinance. The rezoning request goes to council on the 25th. Okay. Thank you. The next submission deadline for a large scale development plan is at the end of the month. If they, if you're trying to get one in that soon. Okay. Thank you. The next section on the agenda is conditional use uh, request. This is C-2312 from Beverly Joan Gardner, their irrevocable trust out on Kelly Road. Uh, this is presented by Blue and Associates. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, back in 2013, 
our the the property owner of record came through and got a uh, got a track a track split approved through the planning commission, uh, and then failed to file deeds afterwards. They got the approvals and they got it uh, filed with the the county, uh, but then didn't ever follow through on the back end with all the uh, the additional items. Um, now that the owner of the property uh, has passed. Um, the property is in a trust, and I have Mr. Lindley here as the trustee of the, uh, did you say trustee or executor? I always get the word wrong. Trustee, trustee of the trust, and he is here to, uh, we have brought back the same survey, but now that uh, some items have changed in the code, uh, we're, we're coming to Springdale to ask for a conditional use permit for a tandem lot. And then uh, variance from the from the paving requirement in order to get back to it. There is a, a, an existing access back to that back lot, uh, but they're wanting to get rid of that access in order to uh, put an access down on the southern property line, in order to maximize the, the usable area on that front lot. And so, uh, my name's Nathan. If you have any questions for me on the survey, and I've got Mr. Lindley here. Uh, if you have any questions on the intent. Have any staff comments? Any staff comments at all? So, will the house um, on the on the front lot closest to Kelly be accessed from the existing drive or the new drive? From the existing. Yes. Okay, and then so past that house, you'll vacate that portion. Right, and it's paved mm -hmm. up to where it That's curves uh, to go to the to the carport. It's okay. already paved up to there, okay. basically where the end of the arrow is, mm -hmm. and then beyond that is uh, gravel surface. How big is that lot? How how? Sorry. How um? What's the frontage on the road there? How how long is that lot? Uh, 300, 330 feet. Okay, so you've got one hundred fifty feet between the drives. They got, they got drives. plenty of frontage and, and all that. And no, no problem. Now, are you asking for a variance for it to be permanent, or you want to pave it in two years? Are you asking for a permanent waiver of paving requirements? Permanent waiver, uh, best I can, best I can uh, gather. And I've got confirmation from Mr. Lindley here. Anything else? Any comments from the audience on this issue? Can you give us your name and address, please? My name is Lewis Gardner. 13049 13 or 13055 Kelly Road. I live in the back half of the property you see there. I've been using the existing easement for 38 to 40 years. <clears throat> As you see, the, the new easement, ingress, egress, on this bottom half here where it eliminates the, the first half, I just, the purpose was supposed to be tied into the existing easement without having to change all that, it's going to be a lot of expense on my behalf. If I have to go all the way up, that's an eighth of a mile to 25 feet from the or easement, whatever it is. But I would like to keep the original easement from the road to there. I can change that, but I'd like to keep the original easement that I have. I've been maintaining it for 38 to 40 years. So if you could, you want Consider to that. address why it's being changed? Excuse okay. me? We're not proposing this being changed. What the executor of the estate is asking for it to be changed. Right. So, somebody want to address that? We assumed right. the two of you together had already agreed that this is what you wanted to do. Uh, my name's Preston Lindley. I'm the trustee that my aunt selected. And in her trust, it requires that the trustee provide a new easement uh, across the property. The acreage in the front will be going to the two sisters. And the two sisters want the easement to be along the south property line, and I've got too much in my hand to get this. Okay. Uh, 
if I could, just uh, Go ahead. it says that uh, my trust trustee shall distribute to Lorraine Gosbiner and Melba Hudson the real property more particularly described on Exhibit A, which is an older survey. Uh, on the new survey, it would be Section 2, which is what you're looking at there. Uh, this distribution shall further include the grant of an easement across the real property described herein in favor of Lewis Gardner or the individual uh, who take the property set forth on Exhibit B, which now is Exhibit 2. Okay. That's what the trust says. Okay. I don't think the city's going to get in the middle of yeah. taking care of this. Uh, is Taylor or David or somebody back there from yeah, the yeah. attorney's office? Okay. Uh, David, tell us what we do. We've got... Well, it's really not our business, is yeah. it? Yeah. I guess I'm a little unclear. I was assuming that this was the, the tandem lot split implied that there was joint ownership of, of both lots, but you know, where there's an ownership issue that has to be resolved before anybody can approach the commission and seek to, uh, to further burden their property. Well, at, with, with it being in a trust and he is a trustee to, to take care of the statement in the trust, mm -hmm. where does that leave the city? There's, do you own that property, sir? That back property is deeded to me, and not deeded to me yet, but it's been willed to me from my mother. Okay. He's the, the brother. There's I two will sisters. Be. My sister will be the, the this half over I here see. is willed to my sisters. And this, the back I, half I think that's something. If, if the, the trust, ha whoever is petitioning this, has to have full control of everything they're petitioning for, or the commission really can't act on that. My question is, as being the, the trustee of this, mm -hmm. Trust document. Do Does he have control. full authority to do this? And you have to tell us that because he, I don't he, know. He has full authority at the moment because what I'm hearing is this is a future interest you're talking about. It hasn't vested yet. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, the, the driveway, the, the easement, and everything is already there. You see it in the yellow. It curves around. It's on the it's on the first survey we did. Every turn, every radius, foot by foot, and that's what my mother intended for me to do was come from the road as you see down here on the lower end where the new easement is they want me to put in. She want to come in there and tie into my existing easement. That's what I Well, I mean, told. we, the, the, you know, the trust speaks for the interest is the trust and own, the intent of that. But does the trust own both of those tracks? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think that's a future interest. That's not a current interest. And so, yeah, it can legally be acted on right now as to the petition. Okay. So as presented, the current access easement would have to be vacated from the arrow point to the whatever direction that is, west maybe? Yes. And then reestablish a access easement along the south property line. That's that's what you're proposing is the trustee that's what of the, the trust. Of the trust. To do. Okay. That's not what the trust says to do. The trust says that I should move my, where my mother didn't phrase it right. I think she put driveway in the trust, but I think she didn't, she didn't use the terminology ingress, egress, but I'm, I'm 100% positive if you intended for me to use the existing easement there, except for the other portion. That way I wouldn't drive past their houses if they choose to sell it. If they have me do that new easement, there's lots of trees. There's a green space there. And the, the space, the space where they got the road marked has already been cleared out 30 foot. There's tree line on each side of it. Well, I would suggest that you guys get together and work this out. Well, this is all David. done without my knowledge. This new easement down here, okay. it was taken on upon itself to do it. I just happened to show up here. Yeah, I'm not sure they want to see what's going to happen. David, no we're back to you again. I mean, this this really puts the planning commission in a bad position. Excuse me, sir. Oh, okay. the, the the trust speaks for the property at this time, absent some legal document to the contrary. Uh, this is a future interest. 
This is subject to court litigation for other causes of action. The commission can legally act upon this if it so chooses. If it feels that it's not adequately informed, it can take other measures. But at, the trust is the only lawful entity that would be recognized at this point. Okay, but none of us have, have looked at the trust document. Nor have I. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of putting the, the planning commission in the position. What I'm going to suggest is we table that. You get the right trust now, document to the city attorney's office. Y'all see if you can figure this out, and we'll go from there, and, and we'll take care of this at the next meeting. Okay. That way, y'all have to work it out amongst yourselves, or you have to verify with the city attorney's office that the trust allows it to happen like it goes. Okay. Does anybody want to make a motion to table it to get that done? Okay. All right. We've got a motion and a second to table twenty three twelve. Who made the second? Who, yeah. who, who motioned first? I think Howard. Brent. Okay. okay. So, y'all, before we get to the next planning commission meeting, we need to get that document to the city attorney's office and make sure we verify everything that we've got. Okay? Yeah. We don't need to vote on a table, do we? Yeah, we need to vote to okay. for it to be tabled because okay. they didn't ask for it to be tabled. Okay. All right. So, Howard, you, you made the motion. The motion was made by Brent. 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 Okay. Sorry. All right. Sorry. Brent. Got it. And then who second? Okay. Howard. Thank you. Okay. Now then. Okay. Parker. We're voting to table it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right, Tyler. Yes. Austin. Yes. Cardiel. Yes. Compton. Yes. Couch. Yes. Hussein. Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Um, <laughs> under C2111, we've got a review for a conditional use for GPS transportation. Uh, this is up on 48th Street. Uh, it's presented by Tatum O&B. Actually, um, I need to start before you. Okay. And... May of 21, a conditional use was granted for this piece of property, uh, approved by the Planning Commission, went to the City Council, and the resolution was adopted on May of 25th of 2021 to allow a use unit 35 transportation services at this location. The conditions of the large scale was that a large scale development plan is needed for the entire track and parking of all the vehicles on paved surfaces only. To date, we have not received a large scale development plan for this piece of property. And I think there's some pictures, can we move forward where vehicles are being parked on grass or gravel. I guess a gravel was added to those areas. Both of those things are in violation of the conditional use that was granted in 2021. The property owner was, I, was contacted to tell him we would have the um, review tonight. If the Planning Commission determines that there is an alleged violation of this conditional use, the property owner has 30 days in which to correct the situation or the Planning Commission can move to discontinue the conditional use. So those are the positions that we're in right now. Um, so if you want to address the conditions and where we are with this, we can go from there. Yes, ma'am. We're asking for an extension on the conditional use. Um, we have built a drainage impact statement drawing. I think we've submitted that already to add additional um, parking over the top of the existing gravel to um, fulfill the commitment we needed. Um, that would add an additional 20 new uh, parking spaces to be in compliance with what was needed. But that would, my understanding, be a extension on the commercial conventional use. Okay, what about the large scale development plan? I and the reason I asked, because when this conditional use was approved, there were neighbors who were concerned about lighting, screening, landscaping, all of those were put off with the idea that a large scale development plan would be submitted on this piece of property so that we could know those issues were addressed. There was no additional landscaping done. There is not a lighting plan that's been submitted uh, because we anticipated that that would happen within the next 
I mean, we this was this has been two years, so I think we're well along and should have had something by now. Where are you on the large scale development plan? So I think our plans at this point is we don't know what our plan is for this property. As you know, we've bought other properties nearby in the area with the the transition of Harbor Avenue flyover coming. We don't know what to expect coming out of the property, so we do not have a plan uh, built exactly for what we're going to do. Um, that's the reason we're making these renditions. There has been landscape done to the property. Um, this has been adjustments for the parking lot. There will be um, um, uh, variances between both the properties uh, built um, to protect it from the neighbors. So you um, can submit a large-scale development plan for just this existing building and what you want to do with the parking lot that would address all of the screening, the lighting requirements, and the landscaping, just not for the rest of it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that would address that issue if you did a large-scale development plan for just this portion of it and leave the rest of it as phase two to be done sometime in the future, and we take care of those concerns. Can you have one of those ready in the next 30 days? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then those are the actions you need to submit to my office the large-scale development plan for just the portion you want this to be with meeting all the commercial design standards and landscaping and screening requirements and lighting requirements, okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then there's no action taken as long as he's willing. In 30 days, we'll come back. If not, then you can determine whether you want to give an extension because we have something or uh, revoke the conditional use at that time. Everybody good? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so no action on the item? No action taken. Okay. He's, he's right. agreed to it, and it will be in the minutes that that's what he agreed to do. Okay. Okay. Got it. The next section, eight uh, preliminary plats, replats, final plants. The first one we have up is 2308, which is Nature Walk. It's at the eastern end of Cheyenne Trail. It's uh, uh, North Pleasant. It's presented by ESI. Engineering services, not here. You want to come back and revisit that? That's unusual. Well, let, just let's see if there's somebody yeah, out there. they've got to be here. They're always here. Hmm. Okay, so we'll come back to All that right. one, we'll, and we'll come back to me. Jacob's Crossing, too. Okay. Let's go to. We're going to come back to we, it in just a few minutes. We may come back to it just as yeah. soon as somebody is here. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Preliminary plat 2309. This is uh, Tankers Lee subdivision, south of Harbor, north of My Street, presented by Blue and Associates. George DeCain with Bloon Associates, uh, residential single family subdivision. I'm here to represent it. Okay. Yeah, 2309. Any comments at all? Staff comments at all? Planning staff yeah. has only standard comments. All right. Billing inspection has a comment too. Okay. After Katie. Okay. Okay. Engineering comments, and, and a lot of these typically get addressed at the construction level stage, but I'm going to read them all. Um, show minimum finished floor elevations for lots adjacent to the detention pond. Need to calculate the 100 year water surface elevation of the swale at the south of the subdivision. And com sorry, I lost my train of thought. At the south of the subdivision, and compare to the pond to, de to determine the finished floor elevation for those lots, because um, you need to take the higher of the two. I also recommend strongly to plot that 100-year water surface elevation of the swale as a drainage easement along the backs of lots 7 and 9. Um, we'll need a geotech report before construction. Need to show the street section and profiles. Um, I recommend you ask for a waiver for the Highway 112 improvements. It says state will be taking care of those. Um, show all existing and proposed lighting. And then I have one question. Is this street intended to be public or private? Because I couldn't figure it out. What? Let Ed do his comment, and then we'll... Uh, yeah. Ed? Yeah, we just need a letter to the fire chief um, requesting that you have a dead end greater than 750 feet. In that letter, he should have described what the um, 
the improvements are, and they, they, the street is wider, and the wider and the hydrants are closer together, and the setbacks are a bit deeper. Okay. Uh, street will be public. Um, we haven't given it a name yet, I guess, but it will be a public right of way street. We do show the right of way, or hopefully, we show the right of way down through there. I believe I see dimensions. <laughs> That's all right. Hopefully, well, either way, we will get that addressed. Um, there were some things that we didn't see, um, and we will have to address with Katie separately. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, we will get ahead, go ahead, and take care of all her, and make sure we coordinate with all her engineering comments. Okay. okay. Ed, do we have an issue of granting a preliminary plat approval before we know whether the farm marshal will allow for the extension? He should be able to get a letter to the fire chief within a day or two, and they can get it approved in a day or two, so it's not a big deal. But if I, he says no, they're going to have to come back. If they say no, he'll have to come back. I, okay. I am pretty pretty sure that he's not going to say no, but we make sure that everybody does the same thing so we're not showing privilege to any other one group or the other just because we know he's going to do it. Uh, the code actually says it has to have special permission. Thanks, Ed. Are you guys good with spe we're waiting on the special permission to go ahead and approve it? That's up to you guys whether you want to see whether he's going to do it or not, if you're comfortable with that or not. If it's not, if he says no, then they're going to be back. Okay. Okay? Is that good? Sure. Any comments from the uh, members that, that are here in the audience? To the commission, this would be a motion subject to all of the staff comments that have been made and also subject to fire marshal approval, um, which we should get in a day or two. We need a, a motion subject to staff comments. And from Chris, thank you. Second. From Dale, thank you. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Cardiel? Yes. Compton? Yes. Couch? Yes. Hussein? Yes. Parker? Motion passes 7 0. We have two items there that we'll revisit here um, later on in the meeting. We now go to large scale developments, and we've got 2324, L2324 discount tire. Um, that's presented by Vasquez Engineering. Good evening. Um, I'm Julian Castillo with Vasquez Engineering. I'm just here to get our large scale development reinstated. Uh, which previously expired that we got approved last year. Um, but we're ready for it now. Go ahead. Staff? Um, other than standard comments, planning staff just has one comment of uh, need an updated approval from the Harbor Meadows Architectural Review Committee. Previous approval was from March of 22 and expired after six months. Okay. So you know you have to go back to the Harbor Architectural Review Committee for a new approval. Yes, we're going to get okay. that. Okay. And engineering has no comments. Okay. Any comments from the public on the issue? This is L2344, discount tire. Um, to the commission, this would be a motion uh, subject to the staff comments. Okay. Peyton. We have a second on that motion. All right. Nathan from Brent. Austin. Yes. Cardiel. Yes. Compton. Yes. Couch. Yes. Hussein. Yes. Parker. Yes. Tyler. Yes. That motion passes 7 0. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, large scale 2345 and then a, a few variance requests as well 2375 for McFryer Warehouse up on Thompson and it's presented by Half and Associates. Good evening. My name is John Wary with Half representing this project. Uh, the project consists of a 35,000 square foot office warehouse building at 4784 North Thompson. Um, and the plan is to put the building at the west edge of this property so it'll face the future Dixieland Road. We'll be extending public water and sewer 
and private storm drain along the south side of the building. And in the east side of the building, opposite Dixieland Road, will be a, a truck dock and truck court. We're asking for some variances on this project. Um, I'm looking at the agenda that are listed A, B on the parking lot orientation. We're providing more than 60% of the parking on the front of the building. However, we push the building back to where there's about 170 feet between the west curb of the parking lot and the east curb of Dixieland Road with all green space detention and landscaping between the parking and Dixieland Road. Uh, second item number B is for variance on the commercial building standards to eliminate the need to provide the on, uh, articulations on the dock side of the building and the roof. Uh, that's, I guess that's B and C. And then D is for landscaping, uh, asking to vary the uh, landscaping for the perimeter on the far east end of this property, to put the perimeter landscaping on the north, west, and south, and then eliminate the foundation landscaping on the dock side and the south side of the building. And all the required plantings on the dock side and the south side of the building are provided on site, just not on those sides of the building. I'll try to answer any questions y'all have. That's it, you have any staff. Any staff comments, Rick? Yes, sir. In addition to standard comments, we have uh, perimeter landscaping required in accordance with Chapter 56, for which a variance has been requested. Uh, no more than 60% of the off-street parking area for the entire property can be located between the front facade within the front yard of the principal building and the primary abutting street unless the building and or parking lots are screened from view by outlot development, i.e. restaurants and additional tree plantings and or berms for which a variance has been requested. Foundation landscaping is required per Chapter 56 for which a variance has been requested. Uh, facades over 100 feet in linear length shall incorporate wall projections and or recesses per Springdale commercial design standard for which a variance has been requested. Engineering. Engineering comments. Um, please provide profiles of the proposed storm drainage along Dixieland Road. And then I did have one question. Y'all were proposing two inlets. Um, did y'all work with our, our team on getting up for for Dixie on like the Dixieland Road design. Yeah, we've been working with with, ben. with John and Ben. Okay, yeah. that's what I thought. So I just want to make sure those needed to be inlets and not just just boxes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Then I'm good. Thank you. Any comments from uh, members in the audience? To the commission, this would be a uh, a call for the vote um, and a motion subject to staff comments. I think any questions or comments about the variances that are requested? No? Okay. Peyton suggesting we take them all together. Are you okay with that? Everybody? Okay. All right. We've got uh, the variances requested um, parking, facade and exterior, roofs and landscaping. That's on 2375. We would need a, uh, a call for the vote on that. Chris, call for the vote. Cardiel? Yes. Compton? Yes. Couch? Yes. Hussein? Yes. Parker? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. And then now on 2345, uh, we would need a motion that's been subject to Rick's comments and engineering comments uh, um, on the uh, project itself. 2345, this would be a motion subject to staff comments. from Dale, second from Chris, thank you. Compton? Yes. Couch? Yes. Hussein? Yes. Parker? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Cardiel? Yes. Thank you, motion passes 7-0. Thank you. All right. Item uh, under uh, Board of Adjustment. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One more under large scale. Powell Street Hangar Number C or Letter C, presented by uh, Greg Thomas from Garver. This is on Powell Street. 
Hello, my name is Greg Thomas. I'm here with Garver. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about the hangar. Planning had standard comments only. One tiny comment from engineering on your erosion control plan, please label temporary all the items that are intended to be removed at the completion of the project and then apply for your grading permit. Any comments from members of the audience on the hangar off Powell? Okay. To the commission, this would be a motion subject to our tiny engineering comment. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Howard. We need a second for that. All right. From Ray Cardiel. Couch. Yes. Hussein. Yes. Parker. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Austin. Yes. Cardiel. Yes. Compton. Yes. Okay. Passes seven zero. Thank you. Thank you. Board of Adjustment. This is B twenty three seventy four. Billy and Margaret McGarra. Uh, this is on 4565 Hickory. I want to reduce the, uh, the rear setback from 20 feet to 10 feet, and it's presented by Billy and Margaret McGarra. Hi, my name is Billy. I live at 4565 Hickory Street, and we're wanting to have our rear setback set back from 20 feet to 10 so we can better use, utilize our backyard. We're wanting to do a, there's a 24 by 24 concrete slab there. We were wanting to do a 40 by 30 shop building with a new concrete slab. So you're taking out the existing slab? No, we're going to just pour over the top okay. of it. Okay. I was just checking uh, it. I, it I, out I think. I haven't talked to a concrete guy yet, yeah, you know, okay. to see what he advises me. Okay. Okay. Anybody, anybody have any concerns? Any questions in the audience? Ed, no. No. This would be a call for the vote from the commission if there are no questions. Okay. Over here. All right. Brent, call for the vote. Hussein? Yes. Parker? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Austin? Yes. Cardiel? Yes. Crompton? Yes. Couch? Yes. Passes 7 0. Okay. Uh, I have one question. Will I get something that I can take to the city to get my? permits and stuff to do this you get a letter indicating that your variance was approved. okay all right thank you very much now i'll tell you we're moving so if you don't get it in the next couple of days you'll get it as soon as we can but we're in the process of moving our office okay, okay. all right okay thank you still on board of adjustment we've got 2377 this is uh, bernice sudeth uh, on nightingale lane a variance for expansion of the driveway towards the primary entrance. It's presented by Ben Sudeth. Hi, I'm Ben Sudeth. Um, it's, I think it was listed wrong on the agenda. It said it was 4402A, it's 4029A. Um, it. All it. I'm doing is just wanting to expand my driveway um, to add a little more parking. I would like to cover it because my poor cars are getting beat up by the hail. So it, we just, I have two work trucks and then uh, other trucks that are in that driveway, so having the additional space over there would help me out a lot. And the reason why the variance was brought up was because it is a duplex and it's crossing uh, the front door threshold there. However, the walkway, we're not blocking any of that. The parking would be more where that trailer is right there. Okay. You own this side of the duplex? I own the whole duplex. Okay. Uh, were you told by code enforcement not to put the gravel down? Do what now? Were you told by code enforcement not to put the gravel down until you got your variance? No, I did the gravel before, and they they came out, but I didn't realize that I was violating anything on the door. They didn't tell me until after, but, I mean, that's what I started doing, the process of trying to get the variance. Okay. You know, find a note in your packet from the city attorney indicating that he was told not to put gravel down. You parked two work trucks here? Yes. I Are you operating your business from this location? It, I have a home office. I don't really have a retail office or anything like that. It's just I'm a appliance service business. I do appliance repair. And so I have one, one truck that I'll use sometimes to haul stuff, and I have another truck with just Okay, a home it. office is supposed to be only done by computer 
and the mail, you're not supposed to be storing any trucks there, anything that otherwise that, I mean, it's, it, that becomes a home occupation. Do you actually work on the appliances in your, at that location? No. We do home repair. We go okay. to people's homes to repair. Okay, which you can do that and schedule all those at that location, but you can't park your work trucks there because it is a home office, not a home occupation. So if you're expanding the driveway to be able to park home uh, vehicles there for a business, you can't do that. And so I, I can't use a personal and commercial, I mean, truck. I mean, is it, I use it for personal and for business. Does it have a, an advertisement on the side that has your I got a magnet on? that I throw on there when What's I'm using the it for business. What's the trailer that's on there? Huh? What's the trailer that's in this picture? That's a, for a oh. pontoon boat that I have, but I've oh. stored the trailer elsewhere. It's not there anymore. Okay. Let me remind you, you cannot operate a business at this location that has anything other than by phone or computer or anything like that. You can't, as a home office, that's all a home office is. That's correct. And I understand okay. that. Any questions from anybody in the audience? So do we have a drawing that has the dimensions of this, or is this just kind of a loose line that's been drawn yeah. on the... No, I, I had one. one that... Um, He's got one. Okay. That has the chose percentages and put it in there. I submitted two. I don't know if y'all... We do. Okay. We do. Well, it still doesn't give an actual... Well, your total square footage of the front yard was uh, 3,695 square feet, and the proposed... Uh, I'd like to pay the, the paved driveway. There would be 970. So it's only 26% of the front yard. Katie, have you been out to look at this? And will they need to do anything with drainage? Um, I don't think I've been out to this one. I think Chris went and looked at it, but they did come in and, and apply for a driveway permit with us. Um, and we didn't see any issues with it. But I, I believe at that point they were saying, you were saying you wanted to pave it, and now you're not wanting to pave no, it? No, I want to pave it. I do want to put a pavement down. Yes, I want to do a permanent, but I didn't Oh, okay, because there's that. a variance for paving on here as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pave it. Okay, so more of like a, a like you, you want to pave it in the future, just not right now? No, I'll, I just hadn't hired anybody. Okay, I so I guess they don't need the variance doing. for when the I paving. Got, when the code enforcer came by, I said, okay, I, I just got confused because there was the variance for yeah. paving. Um, and then you're going to add a carport on it because you can't. I, mean, I, don't I, think I was thinking of putting a carport over the cover part over there, where kind of where the trailer is, just to. Well, you got to meet the setback requirements on that side. You got to be 30 feet. You have a 30 foot setback. I don't know that you have room to put a carport in. Okay. There. Well, I mean, if I don't, I don't. But I'd still like the additional pavement. All the way to the fence. Yes. Why? Well, the, the fence is, is on the side of floor there. I used to have people walk across the, the whole yard there. From oh, the, yeah, it's not an issue with the fence. And why, why, would, you pave, why would you pave the gravel 14 plus 33? Why would you pave it 47 feet over that way? You know what I'm saying? It was just we driving from the it. driveway. I mean, I was just connecting it to the driveway. I think what he's saying is typically people will just come in and put like one more car space like along the driveway, oh. and and sit, and this is just a different configuration than we usually see for these. I got what you're saying. Well, yeah. I thought that that was violating just doing that. That was going to put the pavement right in front of the front door. Exactly. So you'd still need this, and this is a duplex. I don't know if that came up, but so there's there's two front doors. So he needs the variance regardless, right? Okay. And so yeah, so that's what we usually see is having that second, you know, that just extended driveway that way, saying. which which you could do if you wanted to. Um, you are on the corner lot though, correct? Yes. So would you want to do a curb cut or would you still have it connected? Because I, I, I would potentially be concerned about having a curb cut closer to the intersection. Um, well, our drive but we could work it out, you know. Yeah, We're basically I mean getting to design at the table, which we yeah. don't do. Okay, so if you guys want to let him go back and, and talk to engineering about coming up with something different, or we can do that vote or attack. vote on this one and he could come... If he gets denied the variance for the expansion, he can appeal it to city council. Yeah, 
For a home office. Or any, I mean, it's a residence, you know, so you can cover the front yard. And that's just my, that's just my take. I have never seen it requested like that. So. Well, I mean, I, I honestly, I, I usually, even with the grass was there, I had a trailer and an RV parked there at one point in time. Yeah, and so that's why. I mean, but that's why part of the reason, I mean, I, I since it moved the RV in the backyard and, uh, and that trailer, I, I traded in my boat, so I, I put the trailer somewhere else, but, you know, it's nice having the extra parking if you need it, and it doesn't tear up the grass is why I did it that way. So are you asking for it to be tabled, or do you want to buy that? I'm just sharing with him where I'm at at the moment, so he can make a decision whether he wants to table it or do whatever. That's, I'm not in favor. Would you guys be willing to vote on the variance? for the front door side because he's going to need that regardless and then we can kind of work out the details and he'd still have to meet our driveway expansion requirements. And it's going to be paid? Yes. But are you still asking for it to go all the way to the fence? Or are we talking about just one parking space? Yeah, that's I would like for it to go to the fence. I mean, if I mean, it, if not, then I mean, I, my understanding is I can park a trailer and stuff there. It would just be on the grass and it would just get it all muddy well, I don't and stuff. I don't think you can park it on the grass either. You can't park a... No. Oh, okay. Well, I hadn't had anybody come up with that before. <laughs> Do you want to table this and work with engineering and come back with a better proposal? I'd rec I would recommend that because I don't... Most of I mean, I will. I just... I didn't think it was a big deal with that having that much space right there just doing it because it's a big yard. Well, it, it's a big deal when we start letting people extend gravel or pavement all the way over to the side. You know, we're, we're setting a precedent for everything else. That's the position you're putting the planning commission in. I think they're telling you they're not really much in favor of that. But if you want to vote it on. No, I'll go back on. with engineering. That's fine. Okay. We can table it. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. We'll, we'll no table this. All right. Work with engineering. Okay. Yep, no, just Item 2377 tabled. Takes us to. B2381, Trickling Creek Warehouse. Um, this is on Randall Wolby Lane. They want a variance for the paving requirement presented by Earth Plan Design Alternatives. Hello, Sarah Gertz with EDA. So this site uh, came through and was approved in, uh, last year and it is now under construction. So that um, uh, warehouse burned down and it's being built back as it was, but up to code this time, you know, with the uh, site. And the owner was wondering, he's hoping he can have about halfway down the site graveled. So the originally approved um, concrete, it, the, originally everything was concrete, and now he would like that about southern half to be gravel what's, as it was before. What's this hardship? Um, it's just a lot of concrete and it performed fine as concrete before and the, the surrounding properties have in this industrial area are utilizing um, gravel and he would, would like to do the same. Could he do pavement instead of concrete? Asphalt to the concrete? Uh, it's something we haven't spoken about. I don't know. So everything from you know, the street, but a, long, a large distance south for people viewing it off Randall will be there. It's all the parking area. All of that would be concrete. Is he asking it for it to be permanently left as gravel or for a time period to, to pave it within two years with a bill of assurance? To be permanently as gravel. Any comments from the audience? Any staff comments at all? Ed, you've got a comment? Um, 
this building previously was used for st storage of plastics, um, high rack storage of plastics. That's why it burned down. Yeah. Um, and so, and do that, they have to have a fire access road within 150 feet of all points around the building, which means that on each side, they would have to have a fire access road at least wide enough to, for a fire truck. They wouldn't have to have it all the way down across the bottom there. They could, there's plenty of turnaround with the, with the lanes to turn around there, but they would still have to have fire access road, at least a 20 foot wide fire access road down both sides. Is that like shown? Or are you saying- Where the yellow is there, we'd have to have 20 foot, at least 20 foot of asphalt down through. Has to be paved. Doesn't have to connect okay. together on both Wouldn't sides if you've got a turn around. Because we could do a hammerhead turn with any one of those accesses to the building. Okay, understood. So the fire department doesn't doesn't recommend approval of the total waiver of it all being gravel. It it needs to be at least 25, 20 foot paved to the south end of the building with the turnaround on both sides. Yeah, at least needs yeah, at least needs to have a 20 foot wide fire access road down both sides. There's a fire hydrant all the way down there and then then all the way down to the bottom there. So you got to turn around and come back out. Okay, I'm going to ask the question, do you want side. to leave your variance request or do you want to modify it or come back with a modification? Um, if I would I need to modify it per his comments or do, is would that be an automatic modification? What's the width of it now? It is 24 foot on the south, and then on east and west, it's in order to uh, accommodate turning radii, it's much, much wider. Well, you're asking the Planning Commission to approve something without having the ability to see what it looks like for to meet fire access requirements. Do y'all go on a let the fire department dictate what it needs to be paved, or do you want her to come back with a revised drawing? Yeah. Okay. Come back with a revised drawing next month? Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Wow. Okay. We're going to have to have a break in a minute. <laughs> We've got some waivers here. This would be, uh, if approved, it'd be a motion that we would forward off to the city council with whatever recommendation it is. 2320 is the Shaver edition on McRae Avenue. It's a waiver for street improvements on McRae, uh, presented by Jay Young. Okay. We may come back and revisit that. Um, 2321, Kelly Van Curen, uh, southwest corner of Phillips Road and Magara Road, uh, waiver for the subdivision uh, requirements. Also a preliminary plat that uh, requesting informal plat review that would be presented by Bates and Associates and Kelly Van Curen. Uh, Andy Hooper with Bates and Associates. And I'm Kelly Van Curen. Okay. Um, yeah, we're, we're uh, requesting waivers. Um, we've had to perk test on both the tracks. They both perk. We've got access to water. Um, we've got plenty of, of road frontage. Um, Okay, I'm confused. Why didn't you just submit this as a preliminary plat? Because you've created four lots. Uh, no, this is this is the third lot. Well, the piece of property has been split twice already. Uh, once previously. Okay, the second split constitutes a subdivision. Are you requesting not to do improvements to the street? Or what exactly are you trying to get uh, we were requesting all the uh, waiver from all the preliminary and final plat requirements and then just uh, process this as an informal plat that can be approved administratively. Okay. I'm not sure what we're trying to accomplish, but you're going to have to. Okay. Normal procedure is once you can do the first split as an informal plat, we do it at the staff level. Once you split it again, it needs to become a preliminary plat. So we don't we just keep getting one more coming in, one more coming in, where we get to the point we have subdivided, but we haven't reviewed it as a subdivision now. So you don't want to do any improvements to any of the roads? Uh, that's correct. Dedicate right away? We've already de dedicated right away. How have you already dedicated the right away? On the previous informal plat. Okay. 
So you needed to replat it to create a third lot. Basically, is what needed to happen. Okay. <laughs> we, we could have already been done with this had it been submitted as a preliminary plat, but okay. I'm not sure what we're trying to accomplish. Has it been sent to the utilities, to the utility companies? Because it wasn't simulated as a preliminary plat. So it hasn't gone to utility companies. So we don't know if there's any power line easements that need to be, any, any water line easements or anything like that to accommodate having it being split like that. That's why we go through that process. Well, Springdale, Springdale Water reviewed it and they had no comment. I'm sorry? Springdale Water reviewed it. We got we got a round of comments whenever whenever we did it as an informal plat, and then it was only after we received the first round of comments that it came up that it needed to be a preliminary plat. So we did receive comments from Washington uh, from Springdale Water. And you have the septic the perk tests on here. Uh, yes. I don't see any drawings to show where those are all contained on each of the lots to be. We have the, what the, about this gravel drive that goes from one property to the other? What what is that? That's that's just an old kind of just dirt road path path really. It's not really even a gravel drive. Was it an access easement across it? Does it uh, access the property to the south? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, the lots being created do not meet the minimum lot sizes. What, what is this property in the city limits? It's in the planning area. Okay. And it's over at an acre. But it's just outside the planning area, right? I mean, just outside the city limits. That's a that's a problem when we start doing this outside. You know, if you deny the waiver of the subdivision requirements, then they'll have to go through as a preliminary plan. Would it be appropriate? Any comments here from the audience at all? Hearing none, would it be appropriate to uh, have a motion and forward it off to uh, city council? Well, there's nothing to forward because yeah. there's not a, a preliminary plan. That's they want I'm... it done at the staff level. Okay. We, we don't do that very often for that very reason. We want it to be a subdivision so everything is looked at like we do it in every other place. I agree. So if you uh, deny the waiver of subdivision regulations, they have to go through that process. Uh, would we not need a motion and a second in order to vote? Yes. I believe we do. Regardless of the intent, we need a motion and then we'll vote. This would be to forward this recommendation off to city council. Well, because it's in the planning area, it doesn't actually go to the city council, okay. it goes to the county planning board. Okay. Uh, you need to take action on whether you're willing to waive the subdivision requirements for this piece, for this final split. And that could be a call for the question on the waiver of the subdivision requirements. Just call for the vote on that? Yep. Okay. All right, this would be a call for the vote then on the waiver of the subdivision requirements. Dale, would you want to? All right, from, from Dale. Tyler? No. Austin? No. Cardiel? No. Compton? No. Couch? No. Hussein? No. Parker? Okay, this needs to be resubmitted as a preliminary plat for this, um, to create this division, and it needs to be submitted at the next submission deadline, which is on the city's website. I can't tell you what it is off the top of my head. It's the end of the month sometime. Yeah. Okay. All right. Last category on the agenda is under other. We've got large scale 2318. No, this that's, is, oops. That's not split. Same one. Which one? That's the same one we just talked oh, about. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, and Patsy, you wanted to talk about 2008, maybe scheduling a public hearing. Yes. Did you mention that? We have received a complaint from adjacent property owner on the um, conditional use for a church located at 3430 West 
Sunset Avenue indicating that the uh, church is taking up more parking spaces than they were allowed to in the uh, conditional use. So we need to set a public hearing for that at the next meeting. Okay. Which will be August the 1st. Need a motion to set a public hearing. Who motioned? Brent. Okay. And who second? Dale. Dale. Okay. Austin. Yes. Uh, Cardiel. Yes. Compton. Yes. Couch. Yes. The same. Yes. Parker. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Okay, that will be handled the same way as the ones we just heard for on the uh, okay. condition used for the transportation services. We need to go back okay. to. We had uh, we had a couple we items here where we didn't have anybody here to speak to that nature walk uh, subdivision. We need a quick break, thirty seconds. Okay. Anybody's here? Okay. Yeah. We're gonna take a quick break. Take five yeah, minutes. Five minute break. See, I told I told you when you came in you wouldn't want to be up here. So yeah. he shouldn't. He It, be, it would be very good if you would perhaps send an email off to us with all that information. And, uh, and just date. The, the, county's a different, the county is a different operation than us. We're only the city. The difference is going through our city council which is elected in Springdale. It's very different than going to county representatives. Very different. But if, send
Sure, we can get going. All right, yeah. All right, we'd like to we'd like to get the meeting back in order here. We've got a couple of items, if if we could. We ready? Hold on, everybody. We uh we had three items on the agenda that we kind of went by. We'll revisit those again. One is uh, Pete, uh, preliminary plat twenty three oh eight nature walk uh, presented by engineering services. Then we've also got ESI. It wants to talk about Jacob's Crossing out on Don Tyson. So ESI on Nature Walk. Thank you. Apologies for our uh, confusion. Um, this is a basically a request for extension of this preliminary plat, and we're happy to answer any questions. Okay, this one was approved. When? When was the original approved? In twenty one. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Has there been any work going on out at that location at all? I don't think so. No. Okay. And can you discuss the delay, why we have a delay, and if there are any proposed changes to this from what was previously approved? Uh, the delay, I think, was mainly due to can costs. Can you get over to the... Sorry. Uh, I think the delay was mainly due to... Brian Moore with Engineering Services. The main delay is that the Riggins sold out to D.R. Horton, and D.R. Horton, it was in all of that process... And now Dr. Horton is the owner instead of Riggins. That's the that's pretty much the main delay. So okay. that that all took a their negotiations took about six months actually. Okay. I think Giselle is here with Dr. Horton, who she was with Riggins before that. Uh, but that that's really the main delay. There's no changes uh, to speak of that I can I can remember. Uh, maybe a few here or there, just small little lot sizes and easement widths or something like that but but for the most part it's it's what it was for the most part it's probably not as comforting to the neighborhood as okay it, it's exactly it is the it same is what it was it was it is what it was Easements there's no changed. there's no more lots okay. than than there were okay all the lot sizes are the exact same as they were before the they all meet the minimum yes the access points haven't changed right. no. okay we have a different builder and it's still the same phase line Correct. Okay. I'm going to make sure everybody understands. We're doing the same thing again that was approved in 2021. Yes. Okay. I don't, I don't believe they changed at all, no. Okay. Staff I, looking I, at them, we didn't see anything that changed, <laughs> correct? It's the exact same one that was submitted and approved in 21. Okay. And the extra easement was for? Okay. An extra drainage easement. Okay. Okay. Good. Any comments from uh, members of the public on this? Now, before yes. we start, let me say we're not talking about whether it can or can't go there, because that's already been determined. It's whether or not it meets minimum standards. Okay. That's the discussion we're having tonight. Okay. All the other decisions have already been made. Hi, my name is Jennifer Graham. I live at uh, fifteen oh eight Thistlewood, which is right on the corner of Larkspur and. Thistlewoods are right in the entrance of this um, subdivision. I think my main question was before we had um, discussed the traffic flow, and there was supposed to be a traffic um, study done, and I was wondering what the results were to that um, at the corner of um, Cheyenne Trail, um, Ridgeview, and Pop Station Road. Okay, I don't. I don't think there was ever any requirement that was set to do a traffic study. I think there was a request made 
And I don't know if engineering actually requested a traffic study or not because it doesn't show up in any of our documentation. Okay. So I don't think that requirement was ever established that they had to do a traffic study. Okay, because I think the biggest, one of the biggest concerns was the traffic mm -hmm. that comes through Cheyenne Trail to Pump Station Road, um, which goes to the park. And then you have all of these additional houses there um, and cut throughs. Um, and that is also a bus stop. So that was a big concern of all of the residents in the area. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Also, it needs to be mowed because it's this high. Sorry. Okay, that's that's a code issue that needs to be addressed. Uh, it's already noted. Okay. Brian, y'all got that down? Anybody from DR Horton still here? You got that note? Okay. okay, got it. Thanks. That one's probably the easy way. Okay. Okay, any that other, was your uh, comment. Any other comments? You no, have to go I to the have, top. You have to go can, to the... Can you go to the yeah. mic? Thank you. Hi, I am Cheryl Thomas. I live on Ridgeview, and I've got grandkids that live on Larkswood and on Winsworth. And my concern is not about that the subdivision is going through, because I understand it will. My concern is there is not going to be a sidewalk on Cheyenne. And the children have to walk down that road, and now the older children have to go to Phillips. And there are this gray stone subdivision was required to make sidewalks all the way around theirs. Why isn't this one required to? They're doing a sidewalk along Cheyenne, the full width of the property. They are? Because yes. I was understanding that there was not going to be. No, you can see it on the plan. Okay. There is a sidewalk that's on that side. Thank yes, you. they are required to do a sidewalk. I'd like to know, my name's Tracy Kutcher and I live on Ridgeview also. And I'd like to know what provisions are gonna be made well, we've already talked about the traffic. It's a big issue coming out of Pump Station Road. I rarely can pull out. Can you hear me? I can rarely pull out of our road without having to stop two or three times because the cars are hauling it around that corner from Pump Station to Cheyenne. So it's a problem. I also want to know what type of fencing is going to go along this end of this subdivision because I'm going to be looking in their backyards. And I want to know if there's going to be a sufficient privacy fence or if it's going to be metal and I'm going to get to see everybody else's junk. Okay. There is no screening requirement between residential to residential. I don't know if they intend to put in privacy fences as part of the development or whether or not each individual property owner when they buy a lot can put up a fence. You can put a fence up on your side. We do um, have a fence, but it's only like five foot. What's the requirement for us to extend that? so that I don't have to look across the street and for sound barrier for traffic. Okay. You're asking two different questions. Yeah, well, the it's, height of it's the connected. Fence, I think is no higher than, somebody tell me, is it eight, six, six feet? Eight requires. Six to eight, an eight foot fence requires a variance. And okay. we don't require any sounding, from any you know sound barriers on any of these kind of projects. Yeah, well, it, it's okay. gonna be with extra traffic, we're gonna be able to hear it. We can hear it now, it's already increased. Yeah. So I wanted to know what they were going to do with that. Yeah. Um, are they going to put that directly across from our entrance, their entrance, or are they going to move it over farther towards the? I think uh, engineering asked for it to be aligned to get rid of that offset because we don't normally have offsets because that creates a problem. Okay. Is that still on your comments, Katie? Yeah. Yeah. It, it needs to be addressed so there's not an offset. Because that makes it more, either it has to be a certain amount of offset or it has to realign and engineering will look at that one. Okay, and what about stop signs on that intersection? Are they going to put one coming from Pump Station where it connects to Cheyenne? Well, that's not part of this project. You need to go okay. to traffic committee and ask about a, a okay. stop signs that's done at that intersection that's there today, whether or not this goes in or not. Okay. Okay. Those are questions I needed answered. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions from... The audience this would be a motion uh, subject to staff comments uh, to the Commission on nature walk 
All the ones that were there last time stay. Yep. All right. Thanks from Howard. We have a second to that. Second by Ray. Tyler. Yes. Austin. Yes. Cardiel. Yes. Compton. Yes. Couch. Hussein. Yes. Parker. Good. Motion passes uh, seven zero. The, the last, uh, second to the last item, uh, 2310 Jacobs Crossing on uh, Don Tyson. This also um, is ESI. Thank you. This is a similar situation where we're asking for extension of uh, expired preliminary plat from last year. Same scenario with it being bought out? Yes, no? Oh, Brian's coming. Uh, yeah, it is. D.R. Horton doesn't own this one. It's a different ownership group. Mr. Hunt uh, is still the lead on it, but the Riggins buyout skewed how everything okay. was going to be. I knew it was stuff. a buyout. So, I just wasn't sure who bought it. Yeah, so they, they, they were actually bought out of this one, but okay. but D.R. Horton did not buy in. But okay. So it's a and little little bit different than the last one, but, but the reason it lagged was big for the same reason. And the same question. Changes. Any changes? Uh, the phase lines changed. That was the, the main thing. And it was uh, because of the uh, 800, 800 foot of dead end. We actually approved it last time that didn't didn't meet ordinance. So it changed okay. to where we actually meet ordinance now. Okay. So, so building inspection and the fire department are good with the new phasing. So everything can function as if nothing else. Okay. Okay. You would have had to come back with another phasing plan had it stayed like it was. Yeah. Comments? Any comments from the audience? To the commission, this would be a motion. Whoops, I'm sorry. Didn't see it. Yeah, my name is uh, Craig Jones. I live at 3740 Serenity Street. Um, be right uh, adjacent to, to this new development. Um, this lot, this proposed development, there's areas of wooding um, on the property or on the, on the proposed area. And also a... Um, line of uh, screening of trees, large mature trees um, behind uh, my property on Serenity Street that um, um, is between my property and, and this new development. And so just had a question um, regarding that screening and the mature trees that are currently there, if those will be kept, if those will be removed. Some are on my property, some are on the proposed area of development? Well, they're not going to remove the ones that are on your property. Okay? And I don't know if anybody can answer whether all those trees are going to be taken out that are on the subject property. Nobody knows? <laughs> Somebody's going to have to say something, guys. We're not going to stay here all night waiting for an answer. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it'll depend on the utility company and whether they want to go in the front or the back. It'll depend on the lot owner, whether he wants to remove it and put a pool in. I mean, there's there's plenty of things that, that go with that. So well, you do show a utility or a real setback, but it's not a utility easement on along those lots. Correct. And we, and we may end up in the front, but we, we can't say that at this point. Okay, but my point is you don't have a utility easement back there to put anything in. And SWEPCO or Ozarks, whoever may come in after the preliminary plat process and say, we want to be in the back and we want a 20-foot UE. Arkansas Western Gas may or anything like right, that. So, no, we, we are not, uh, what I'm we are not keeping the trees on our property, no. The preliminary plat would have to be amended to add that because you didn't put a utility easement back there. And the gas company, unless they go buy their own, okay. will not have but, one. But I'm, I'm just saying we are not agreeable to keeping trees that are agreeing to keep trees that we don't know whether we need to take out or okay. not. So, but you have utilities easements on both sides of the street so that Correct. water and sewer could go on each side and gas and electric can go on each side because that's where the utility easements are established now. Correct. Okay.
No, I mean, if if they're if they're between in the rear setback line, or if there happen to be, you know, if a lot owner doesn't want to pool, I mean, they're 100 and what what are, what's my depth? 120. You got a 30 foot front setback. You got a probably 55 foot uh, house, so 85. So so you know, there's there's some room in there that a tree could be kept, uh, but you know, we don't we don't know at a preliminary plat stage by any stretch and 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 the whoever buys that lot may want a longer house than a shorter you know i mean we we just can't answer that question okay but the but the other question is when you come in with a grading permit to engineering you're not going to grade all those lots and take all those trees out as part of the subdivision development are you we may we may a few depending on depending on the the okay. actual uh, okay. topography of that but lot. But you're not saying that all of them are going to be cleared. Correct. So we're not clearing. Okay. No, by any stretch. That's, no, 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 no. That's what no, you're we're not. We're not going in and clearing, okay. clear cutting by any stretch. You will know that, Katie, that their grading permit will not take out all those trees. Okay. Any other comments? No further comments. This would come to the commission as a motion. Uh, subject to staff comments, and this is 2310 Jacobs Crossing. And Ray has a motion. We need a second. Second, right. Howard. Peyton. Peyton. Austin. Yes. Cordiel. Yes. Compton. Yes. Couch. Hussein. Yes. Parker. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Thank you. The, the last item would, is on Shaver Edition. This is a motion to go to City Council. It was going to be presented by Jay Young. Okay. Well, they're going to do three improvements. They get their plan approved. They may not be Pretty here, simple. So. All right. Okay. That takes us to the end of our agenda. You um, get to do, I get to do my report. And okay. Patsy. Um, the... Plan as we know it right now is the planning office is moving into the new building at the end of the week. So we are not anticipating a work session this month because we're trying to get settled and figure out what we're doing in this new building. Y'all can come and visit us if you go into the main building and take the first hallway down to the on the right. You know, you'll find building engineering and planning all together in one big department. And we're going to learn how to work together easier and better as soon as we get settled. So that's the game plan. So no work session this month. We will get back into the work session mode in um, August. Uh, the city attorney should be ready by that time to give us an update on all of the acts that were uh, adopted in this last legislative session that it could affect any planning. Uh, he's been working on that for the last couple of weeks. So we'll, we'll have that for one thing to go over at that time. Okay. Thank you guys for your time. If you don't hear from us for a few days, it's because we may not can do anything. <laughs> we don't know yet. Thank, thanks, everybody, for yeah. your time. We are adjourned. <laughs>